Now, the budget confirms that the federal government's expected to get only $200 million from the mining tax this financial year. That's down from the initial projection of about $2 billion. Making changes to the mining tax has been an ongoing campaign for the Greens, and I'm joined now by the Greens leader, Christine Milne. Christine Milne, welcome to ABC News 24. Thank you, Linda. What do you think of the budget? Well, I think that far from being a stronger, smarter and fairer Australia being delivered in this budget, it's actually a weaker, dumber, meaner Australia that is being uh, shown here. 200 million from the mining tax proves once and for all this tax was so badly designed, so flawed, it needs to be fixed. It's clear we've got the opportunity to raise 26 billion with the but, but mining would, tax. But we should have done it. Wouldn't even a fixed mining tax, in your words, have the same problems that uh, be have bedeviled other profits-based taxes in this budget, that, that the circumstances of the high Australian dollar are causing difficulty and are leading to lower company profits, leading to less tax? No, there are structural problems in the mining tax that have got nothing to do with commodity prices. Uh, one is that it's structured at 22 per cent when it should be 40 per cent. One is it leaves out other commodities like gold. Another is the rebating of royalties to the states, the accelerated depreciation provisions. There are all kinds of structural weaknesses that need to be fixed. It never was going to raise the kind of money that was suggested because it's not just dependent on commodity prices. We should have fixed the mining tax and now we've only got 200 million from the mining tax. So the government is taking 2.3 billion out of our universities. They're taking a billion out of renewable energy and the environment. Now, that is not a smart country at all. That, that is really dumb and does not position us well as, to be competitive as a nation in this century. They're also taking four billion, nearly $4 billion out of industry assistance under the carbon price because they're expecting the carbon price when the carbon tax moves to an emissions trading scheme to be well down on what they'd originally forecast. Do you think those changes are good ones? Well, I certainly think it's reasonable that the compensation reflects what the carbon price actually is. So if the carbon price falls, then the cost passed on to the consumer is less. Therefore, you would have less compensation. What I can't agree with and won't vote for is the cuts to the Renewable Energy Agency. We've just had the world flipping over 400 parts per million carbon dioxide. Now is the time we need to be revving up our efforts to convert to the low carbon economy. Now is not the time to be slashing money out of renewable energy projects, nor taking jobs out of CSIRO. I understand about 165 jobs are to go from there. If we're going to be a smart country, you have to invest in education from early childhood right through to universities. You have to invest in innovation. You have to make sure your export products are going to be intellectual property, capacity building around the world, not just focusing on dig it up, cut it down and ship it away. The Treasurer didn't give an indication in his press conference in the budget lockup whether the government would be legislating anything in this budget apart from the Medicare levy increase, which is helping to fund disability care. Do you think the government will legislate anything before the election? Very hard to see, Linda, what they will put through the parliament. Uh, clearly the Greens have said and have been begging them to bring on uh, the Gonski reforms, to bring on the National Disability Insurance and will certainly be pushing to get those through before the election. Uh, we've said we'll vote against the university cuts if they bring those through. But really I think what we've seen is more about a big election platform and putting in the Ford estimates something that they expect the Liberals to either adhere to or remove, I think very little is actually going to go through the Parliament. Would you like to see the budget at some stage in surplus? At some stage, yes. In the economic cycle, that is reasonable. But we, have, we were the ones to say that the blind pursuit of the surplus last year was costing jobs, was bad for the economy, and we should actually relax it and go into deficit. But that doesn't mean to say that you don't raise money with revenue. The opportunity is there to raise money with the mining tax. The opportunity is there to raise it by taxing the bank's profits, for example, getting rid of fossil fuel subsidies. But you don't run the economy without a vision for the future. But do you, what do we but want do you, Australia to look like? That's what you, we need to invest do in. Do you recognise that some of the tax increases you would propose would have an impact on the industries you're increasing tax on, would have the impact on, on some of the growth industries in this country? 
Well, I don't see coal, coal seam gas uh, industries supported by fossil fuel subsidies. A, subsidies are inefficient. B, these are fossil fuels that we're talking about and they are the ones we need to be phasing out. We need to be investing in renewables, getting across to the 100% renewable energy economy. AEMO says it can be done technically. We need to be prioritising it. Now is not the time to be having new coal mines, destroying the Great Barrier Reef, new coal seam gas. That's a bad idea. So under, under what circumstances, under your plans, could the budget be in surplus? Well, the budget could be in surplus by actually investing in the excitement that comes from investing in the knowledge, information sector economy. We've seen no money in this budget to drive small business. We've seen cuts to research and development. But there are, where, there are spending where, measures. You're, but, you're still talking about government spending. Yes, and I'm talking about it to build momentum in the economy. That's what you do. You build the infrastructure projects that are going to drive the future. I mean, we support the uh, metro uh, rail, for example. I think that's a good investment in the future. So let's have a look at the things that are going to actually create jobs, drive jobs in the information and knowledge economy. Let's actually drive the things that make for a smarter economy, make for a fairer society. But let's not insulate the miners from paying their fair share so that the poorer people in our community suffer the most, like the single parents. Where was the increase in New Start, for example? And what we're seeing is a huge amount being spent in cruel offshore detention policies, a big blowout in costs on detention. In fact, more being spent on that than is actually going into Gonski or national disability. Christine Milne, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.